Greetings my friends, Theo Bacchinus. I wanted to do a video today talking about some things I've been up to in the last uh, year or so, either my endeavors or just things that have been uh, hobbies. And uh, today I will be talking about some board games. So I um, have been playing quite a lot of board games in the last few years and especially in the last three or four years I've really ramped up and playing fairly regularly. Uh, in fact, I am a part of a weekly game group you know, a few neighborhoods away. And I go most Thursday evenings. We play all sorts of games. Um, some party games, but mostly what you call modern uh, like Euro games or strategy games. So, um, not really risk per se or things like that. Um, but I, um, before I ramble on too much, I actually want to show you some of the games that uh, that we play. Some of which are my favorites. So, before I get into that, uh, just a little bit about uh, the style of these board games in general. And I'm smoking the London Burley blend still. Um, my 7L804. So one of the things about these games, um, so typically for people who are into the modern board gaming hobby, uh, there's a few things we don't like. In general, you might wanna just call those things like Monopoly. Um, however, I've heard that if you play it with the right rules, it might be okay, but primarily, there's a few things that uh, make for good games. One, no player elimination. Uh, with a few, a few exceptions, most, almost all of my games do not have player elimination. That means every player will play to the very end. Also, um, while some games will, might take a few hours, they do still come to a definite end and just don't go on, go on indefinitely. And then I could get into further distinctions. There's a genre called uh, uh, American themed uh, or Ameritrash or Amerithrash games, which are much, they tend to be much more um, either war or com combat based, a lot, a lot of dice rolls, more very thematic and storytelling. I enjoy some of those, um, although uh, those are not my primary types of, my primary types of games. Uh, the ones I tend to play might be called like Euro games, European games. Um, uh, on, for these games, theme is important, but not necessarily primary. They usually involve uh, very interesting, complex mechanics. Um, you're often building little building things, or it's, it's there's much there can be much more strategic. Not that the other ones aren't strategic, but um, they tend to favor strategy over tactics. But they would still have tactical involves, whereas the American thematic games might involve. In this course, your mileage varies with all this. Uh, would probably be a bit more tactical, for the most part. There's, of course, all exceptions to all these, but um, the one of the first games, the two first games that I started playing, um, and I have them, but I'm not going to show them. I'm going to show some other ones. Were Settlers of Catan which came out in 1995 and won the German Spiel des Jahres or Game of the Year that year. And Settlers uh, is, is quite popular. It um, can be found, I think, at Target and Walmart these days. It's a very clever game. I've never played with any expansions, but it is a very fun game. And then Carcassonne is a tile laying game where you have a bunch of tiles and you lay them out and, you know, trying to build cities and roads and farms and and then you take these little meeples and try to claim different parts and uh, and that was those are probably the two first games I played and after that I played Puerto Rico and a few others but um, I wanted to show you what I have here this game is Splendor very easy uh, to pick up um, and learn and highly recommended uh, you could probably find that at some of the more common, uh, like more major stores. But in that game, you're, it's like a set collection, gem collection game. It's a very, I find it very relaxed. 
very relaxing game to play with friends, and it goes very well with um, it goes over very well with uh, new gamers. Um, this one here, Machikoro, another very popular game in the last few years. Um, I would say this is a mix in some ways between Settlers of Catan and Splendor, um, in that it's a set, set collection, but there's also die, die or dice rolling to then generate great resources like Settlers of Catan. Now as far as party games go, this one here right now is the party game in the world. And I'm not being facetious, um, code names. Um, uh, this, that is what I was referring to, the number one party game on Board Game Geek, which is sort of the site where you can go and look up every game ever, ever made. So in this game you have two teams and there's a, a grid of words and there's a, a spy master on every team who's uh, giving clues to the, the other player or players on their team. And it's one word clue and then like a number corresponding to the different words that are part of like their grid that has to match. And the other team has a part of their grid that has to match and there's like some neutral ones and there's like an assassin that they you have to make sure that they do not guess. And that's primarily the, primarily, primarily the rules of the game. Um, plays pretty quick. Um, it's, it's a great party game but there's just not enough, en enough gamerly sort of mechanics to it that make it quite interesting to those who might favor some more heavier games. And I have some two-player games. Jumbo. this one has gotten quite a lot of use. This is one of my favorite games. This is in my top ten. I play this with my niece Katie quite a bit. Uh, this one, you are uh, buying and selling goods and trying to um, trying to uh, you know, you, whenever you buy stuff, they're they're at a lower cost, and when you sell them, they're at a higher cost. But then, in the in the midst of that, you're doing different things with your your merchant that sort of can help you or like hurt the other player. Um, it's a pretty cool game. It can there's a bit of take take that in it, um, but uh, I really enjoy that game. Uh, this one here is a beautiful game about collecting and cooking edible mushrooms, morels. Um, uh, amazing artwork, very uh, simple to teach, um, beautiful game, really enjoy this one, I play this with my niece a lot too. And this one here is a fantastic two-player game called Acro Tiri. Uh, and this one, it kind of has a little bit of tile laying game, but I'd call it kind of a pick up and deliver game as well. Um, an action selection uh, game or action point allowance game where you have a number of actions that you can use to then move your boat around and, and pick up resources but you're also trying to pick up resources but you're also trying to um, you're also trying to like discover islands re by a really clever um, location mechanic. I can't really explain it right now but uh, uh, very very cool game. I'll have to set the pipe down. Now um, oh and then I have uh, a game I've played a fair amount here. This is a drafting, a two-player drafting game uh, from Portal Games. So this, so drafting is, uh, you have a hand of cards, and out of your hand of the cards, and like all the players at the table have a hand of cards. You pick one, and then you pass a card to the player next to you, and then they do the same thing. So that's like you're drafting based on that, and that keeps going around. And so that's how this game works, and it's what you're doing is you're trying to collect sets of cards and then they sort of point combo on each other and very this is a very simple uh, very cool game I've had a lot of success teaching that one as well um, and then this one here uh, it's been out for a couple years this is also a drafting game but instead of just doing set collection what you're doing is each player when they draft their cards they create a, a, a spaceship and this is one players and that's another players and you get a lot of points by cards interacting with each other, and um, this is very cool. There's a lot of modules to this game, and the you can play non-competitively or competitively. And I've even 
as they call it, pimp out the game by adding in a, um, a, a tray insert that I got online, and I've sleeved all the cards and stuff. So there's uh, websites like this one is called Broken Token. They make these laser cut um, wood inserts, um, and that has been a fun one as well. Oh, this is one I just got called Oh My Goods. Um, I can't talk about the mechanics of all these games, but I just wanted to show you. Um, there's a, this is a small box, to sort of give you an example of size. This is called a small box game, but there's a lot of game in this small box. Um, now, um, all of these games so far have been on the um, somewhat I'd say easy to medium range, probably the heaviest of those would have been probably Oh My Goods, um, Acro Tiri, and then maybe Among the Stars, it's definitely middle to lightweight. Um, now that doesn't necessarily mean that they're, when I say that I don't mean to imply that they have, that they are lesser games whatsoever, it's because um, a lot of them have a lot of deep strategy. Um, and it's just that the amount of rules overhead is on the on the simpler side but within that simplicity there's a lot of depth um now for the next few games and i'm i'll just end after like I guess these four games these are have a bit more rules complexity overhead um sometimes some of these might be called brain burners um uh the one i'm about to show isn't a brain burner but there's a bit more rules complexity um and uh these are the kind of games I tend to favor if I can find someone to play with them, play with me. Um, I can only tend to get uh, my wife to play some of the simpler games with me. Uh, she did like Among the Stars though, and Oh My Goods, and Akrotiri, um, and Codenames as well. And uh, she's played all those, I think all the rest of those with me. Uh, but these ones, um, I have to say many prayers to <laughs> get my wife to play these with me. But. Um, this one, Russian Railroads, I got as a Christmas gift a couple of Christmases ago. Um, fantastic game. This is a pretty, just a straight ahead solid, what they call worker placement game, where you have uh, a game board and you place workers to grab spots, but then when you grab those spots, nobody else can take them. And those spots allow you to do certain things. Um, and each player has their own little board that they're trying to build up tracks on. Um, absolutely love this game. There's a new expansion out for it called German Railroad Set. It's on my wish list, but this, now the next three games are in my top four of all time. Um, my top number one, um, I'll mention, but I've left the box inside. Um, this one, Lewis and Clark, got this during this at the same Christmas that I got uh, Russian Railroads. Absolutely adore this game. First of all, I love the artwork from Vincent Dutre, um, a French artist. Uh, and the designer is also French, it's like it's Cedric uh, Chabussi. I don't know how to pronounce French, but um, this is an amazing game. It's ultimately a race game. And uh, the premise is that um, during um, the, uh, the, the expedition to discover like the West Coast um, with Lewis and Clark, uh, instead, there's a bunch of different teams that have been sent out, and which uh, it's sort of like a slightly revisionist history. And as you, as the different teams go out, basically you're competing to see who gets there first. So it's ultimately a race game. But but what drives the race is um, you are trying to collect resources um, and utilize like helps from the Native Americans. Uh, the game actually calls them Indians, probably to be uh, historically. Um, accurate as what they were called at the time, but the uh, Native Americans, like you have to um, ask them for help. Uh, you can't make it without their help. Um, and there's also a deck that comes out of characters that you then add to your hand of cards. So it's a mix of like a, a little bit of a, um, I call it a, a deck building sort of, if you're familiar with Dominion or Thunderstone or games like that. There's a little bit of that, but then also worker placement and that can then combine uh, ultimately to, um, there's a, the board, but you're, you're racing from St. Louis. Uh, I think this might be, uh, yeah, you're racing from St. Louis, I think, over to the Oregon coast. Amazing game, love it. Um, 
This one is probably one of the biggest game boxes I own. So I have a game designer crush on uh, Vital Lacerda. Lacerda? Lacerda? He's a, a Portuguese designer. This game, just for comparison, there's Lewis and Clark. <laughs> and then, oh my goods! <laughs> so the gallerist, um, in this game, you are a, oh, and there's also a kind of, the box looks like you have a, a set of, um, uh, what are these called? Um, not easels, but um, the box looks like you have uh, some paintings all wrapped up. Um, and in this game, and there's the full rules explanation, explanation would probably take 20 minutes. <laughs> but basically in this game you are uh, a gallery owner, a gallerist, and you're trying to entice visitors into your gallery and uh, and trying to discover artists, promote artists, um, uh, sell, uh, as, you, as you discover artists, you buy artwork for them, and then as you promote them, the value of the art goes up, and then you sell their art based on the contract, and you're also uh, sending assistance into an international um, auction at the end of the game. Uh, crazy amazing game uh, a lot of uh, complexity but also a lot of uh, really uh, wonderful depth to this game and some really clever mechanics as well um, this is um, I, and these last this game gallerist and then Madeira these are definitely brain burners um, these boards tend to have a lot going on on them there's quite a bit of things to manage, um, and in Madeira, uh, you are trying to gather resources and um, complete different uh, goals that come out every every turn. And you do that by gathering resources um, from the land, um, also sort of colonizing cities and shipping things. And uh, there's a cool, some clever dice mechanics uh, in in the game. Um, uh, there's just sort of a lot going on, but this is just amazing, like, I don't know, it kind of melts my brain, but it's it's like in a good way. I know that might not necessarily sound like an appealing thing, but um, Madeira and The Gallerist, and then my number one game um, is also by Vital Lacerda called CO2, um, and that's just, uh, that game blew me away when I first found it. I found it uh, on, a, on a discount rack because um, the box had some damage but the insides were pristine and uh, in that game you are uh, trying to meet the uh, energy demands of the different continents around the world over the course of uh, four or five decades um, and you do that by replacing uh, fossil fuel um, like bad polluting power plants with more energy efficient ones and there's sort of a co-op nature to the game as well, like a semi-co-op, but you're still ultimately trying to be the best uh, energy company. Um, and that is, those at least my top three games at the moment. Um, I'm always playing new ones. Um, but uh, this is something that I really enjoy doing. Uh, I enjoy the player interaction. Um, I don't play video games anymore, um, almost, except for maybe like an app here or there. But um, I enjoy just sitting down and reading the rules, and I'm kind of a board game geek like that. I just enjoy getting into new, um, figuring out how, sort of like almost like a puzzle to me, like figuring out how the things work together. Um, I'm typically the rules explainer, especially for my games, but um, uh, the, the game group I go to uh, every week, they have, um, almost everybody there has their own collection and so people are always bringing games and the homeowner, um, the host has a, plenty of his own games and so I am I don't have to explain games all the time, which is kind of nice, but um, I enjoy the player interaction. Um, it's a good group of people who are also really good sports. Um, I typically don't win games. I don't, um, it's nice, it's a nice bit if I, I do win a game, but um, <clears throat> but I, I enjoy exploring the strategies and there's often multiple paths of victory in these sort of games. So there's not just like one uh, dominant strategy um, where you can win. And I enjoy exploring those and um, 
So these are some of the board games that I've been playing the last few years, and especially in the last couple of years, I've really ramped up some of my interest in, 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 in the interaction in the hobby. Um, so I hope you found all that somewhat interesting. Um, I know some of you play some of these games. Um, Settlers of Catan and Carcassonne are probably the most popular as far as the more like modern um, uh, game, uh, like hobbyist game movement. Um, and there's plenty of uh, you know, resources out there, plenty of podcasts I listen to. Which, um, and then BoardGameGeek.com is the website resource for all things board games. Every board game ever made is on there. Um, and you can uh, go into discussions about the game, uh, post pictures or look at pictures that people have taken on, on the games. Um, and it's helpful sometimes if you have a question about some sort of rules issue, it's almost always like answered um, by somebody who's asked a similar question. And if not, because it might be a newer game, then you can ask it and somebody will answer. And often what's really cool is that the designer, uh, him or herself, will actually um, is they're, they're pretty everybody all the designers these days are on there and they will be monitoring their games and they um, will pretty much almost always as long as they're alive you know if, if, if it's a game designer like um, uh, who's the guy that did acquire um, Sid Saxon like he's passed away but um, uh, the uh, all all of these designers are on are on board Game Geek and they will often answer their questions or have somebody who um, who knows so. Um, really enjoy the hobby, and uh, if you have any questions about any of these games or what I think about any of these or any of the other games, um, questions in general about board games, uh, put a question in the bucket. So, thanks very much.